Hey everybody, today we're working on a 4R70W. It's out of a Ford Mustang. This transmission was built by one of the big name performance shops and um, it failed. We're gonna take it apart, see what's inside of it. This customer had a lifetime warranty from the place, but he didn't want anything to do with it. So let's see what his problem is and let's see what we can make better. It's a good bit of metal and it's it's got a Pretty nasty smell like burnt trans fluid. So get the valve body and the filter out of here. Our little wiring connector. Those are available if you need them. They're not typically a source of concern. All right, we have a bracket that holds the solenoid in. All right, when we do these, um, we like to change all the solenoids because they're high failure items. So there's an assembly that's two shift solenoids. We have a torque converter clutch apply solenoid, which is a uh, PWM or duty cycle solenoid. And this could give you converter shutters and strange problems, code PO740, PO741 when it's not working right. Pressure control solenoid, they wear out and um, you're gonna end up with burnt clutches from that. So it's best to just throw these things into garbage and start over, they're pretty inexpensive. All right, so we have something here. Looks like a little spacer that's put on here. And presumably this is to keep this little sombrero in here from beating into the separator plate, which is kind of a problem on some of the older ones. So I guess that spreads the load out a little bit. So we're gonna get into this valve body later and see what else got done in here. You can see there's, um, an inner spring added to the uh, two, three accumulator. So we're taking out the two, three accumulator. Now this is the one, two accumulator that we're taking out. And this looks like an aftermarket spring that they have in here. So you have one large on the top and this red one, or both of these red ones look like aftermarket springs. We've got our little uh, Christmas themed green and red springs in here. Some more junk in here. Um, this is kind of important. If you do these, it's good to keep an extra pen, and we use this as a checking pen because you want to make sure that this bore is tight. I don't know if you can see that. It's got some tiny, tiny bit of movement in here. So it's not so bad that we have to bore this oversize and put a bronze bushing in there, but they make an aftermarket pen that has an O-ring on it because what happens is this chamber fills up with oil to release the band on a F43 downshift. And if it's leaking this oil back through this pin into the case, it's gonna slow down the release of that piston. And that would, that's what gives you forward clutch problems and band problems, which are you know pretty common in these things. Next, we have the low reverse servo. And this is typically something that the rubber gets hard and uh, you want to change them. But this, this transmission only has like a hundred miles on it since it was done. So it's a hundred miles into its lifetime warranty. So um, its lifetime wasn't too terrific, it looks like. More metal. thing didn't really age well. 
case connector. And we have another video out there on, on these. We're gonna have to um, eventually take all this out. This whole manual shaft, rooster comb. We have to move it this way so and take it out so we could get this solenoid the heck out of here. Now, I tried to speed this up a little bit for you guys. I already have the um, pump puller on here. I'm gonna take this pump out and reveal what's going on in here. Now, the, the first thing I'm gonna do here is take this pump apart because when people put stuff in, sometimes they don't engage the torque converter correctly and it'll give you a premature failure. So if you take the pump apart, that becomes very, very apparent if that was done incorrectly. Seems kind of stuck together. All right, so there's not there's not damage from that. This pump seems to be in fairly decent condition. They've hit this with a lot of sandpaper, so we're gonna have to or something. We're gonna have to measure that all up and make sure it's still in spec, but. At least it looks like the torque converter was installed properly and um, we didn't blow up the pump or anything like that. Okay, this is the overdrive band and this, this looks like brand new. Um, but he might not have ever gotten into fourth gear with this thing. So, you know, it's maybe not a surprise that it looks, looks in decent shape. All right, I'm seeing here this drum is kind of brown, like it got pretty hot and the clutch is burnt. And also, this is the factory uh, stamp steel drum. This thing is a pile of crap. They make an aftermarket one that's a whole bunch better. I don't understand if you're selling a performance transmission that supposedly has a, a lifetime warranty, why you wouldn't be upgrading this. But either way, let's see what we got. I can see the way this jumped up, that these clutches are cooked. See that spring action? This is gonna be nasty. Wow. There's literally no friction material left on here. So this whole clutch pack is like a big spring. So for sure, we gotta change all this, including that drum. That drum is going in the garbage. It's your reverse input clutch, and typically these things don't burn. You know, it's very rare you take one of these transmissions apart and see these burnt, but these look like um, some pretty shitty ass aftermarket clutches. I don't want to mention brands, but um, we probably wouldn't use those. Second clutches, again, they're, they're in pretty good shape. They're not burnt or anything like that. Okay, we have a mechanical diode style drum and um, we have this aftermarket this is a GM differential snap ring and an aftermarket plate that goes under there and then it gets staked into place so the snap ring can't go anywhere because you know that's a big problem with the factory one popping off and sometimes this intermediate one-way clutch fails as well another thing you want to look at is the edges of these Okay, these engage into a sun, sun gear that's inside the trans. And what happens, you could start to see it happening here a little bit. I don't know if you could see that. But these two parts mate, and these two parts beat into each other. And as far as I'm concerned, this definitely should have been replaced. I mean, I'll get a close up. This is pretty, pretty dudged up there.
Next, we got to take out the um, sun gear and the shaft. Now, this shaft is a, a common source of concern, and this looks like the factory shaft. So, you know, when you're doing one of these for performance, you want to upgrade at least the shaft, and depending on the power level, they make a drum that's got this shaft built into it, and the whole drum is not like one of these stamped steel deals. It's also a, a cast iron drum or cast steel, not cast steel, forged steel. All right, so now I'm going to take our center support out. And the snap ring is a, a little different. It's got, you know, little tabs to make it easier to compress. This little spring, oh, it did come out. All right, but sometimes when they don't come out, you just get the uh, output shaft, and if you have a bench like this, you can kind of boom, shoot it forward. So this, this transmission only has one compound planetary. You have a one-way clutch in here. And this is fairly strong. You don't really have issues in this area. You know, in these planetaries, as long as your lube system stays in good condition, they typically stay, stay pretty nice. But what you do want to look at is in here. These gears get pitted up. I don't know if you could see that. It's just kind of very faint. It's starting to transfer metal from this gear into the um, gears that it drives. Reverse band, nothing special. They, they usually don't go bad, but they can break. So that's something we like to change. And this is a big source of problems too. And again, this drum is not upgraded. This is uh, nothing's done here. Let's see what we have in here as far as a clutch pack. Oh, <laughs> these look like the crappiest clutches you could get. I mean, there's not even any writing on them. Like nobody's willing to take responsibility for, <laughs> for making these guys. So um, they're in good condition, but it, this is certainly um, not what you'd, you'd call a performance clutch. This snap ring... It's just for the assembly line purpose of, of um, holding the band so it doesn't move when they're putting it together on the assembly line. So that's optional. You could even leave it out when you're, when you're uh, working on this trans. So this is typically not a source of concern, your output ring here. But this drum, I, you know, I want to talk to the customer more as far as his power level. You know, I, I think we should upgrade this to the... Um, aftermarket uh, forged drum, but that, that's going to be up to the customer and his budget. But either way, I mean, nothing about this at all says performance transmission, except maybe they did some valve body work and we saw that those accumulator springs were different. But um, this is going to be a lot of work to, to make this into something real. And again, it's this went very, very short of a distance before it failed. So, um, we're going to really have to get into the nitty gritty and determine exactly what happened and, and why these clutches burnt. Because obviously if you don't find the reason for a problem, you're going to have a problem again. So that's what I got for you. Okay, so as we got a little bit further, I see why the um, forward clutches burnt out. See these two rings are two different colors. This one is completely trashed. You see the side clearance? Well, I don't know what the issue is, what caused this. Maybe it was never changed in the first place. But what happens is this drum is supposed to, I mean, this ring is supposed to turn with your drum as your drum turns. If that stops happening, then the drum keeps turning and the ring stays stationary and it wears it out very, very quickly. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell.